Hey, hey, it's Dr. J coming at you with another homework problem from 4.6. Um, I'm going to do this problem and a little bit of uh, explanation about it um, before I post the next um, part of uh, 4.6, which hopefully will be the conclusion of 4.6. Um, but this particular problem is um, just a technique that I'll be using quite frequently. So uh, one of the interesting aspects of the base E exponential function here is that it can literally mimic any of the exponential growth or decay functions that we've um, come across in this class. Um, so just uh, FYI, this is a, an equation that we've seen before. Uh, this would be a principal of $345. That's the $345. That would be your original principal. Um, and then 1 plus 0 0.95. Oh, excuse me. A little sloppy this morning. 0 0.095. That's what this decimal represents to the T. So this would be an annual growth of 9.5%. That's what this formula would represent. Um, you could think of it as money, the annual growth of money at a particular interest rate, 9.5%. Or you can think of it as uh, population. You have 345 people uh, in the town, and it's growing at a rate of 9.5%. However you want to think about it, it really doesn't matter. But that's what this... Uh, function represents. It's an annual growth function. Well, we can convert it to continuous growth function. So it's growing continuously, kind of like a population would grow. You know, the population of people in a town doesn't wait till the end of the year in order to produce the new batch of people. That's just not the way it works. People are being born all the time, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, somebody's being born. Um, or if you're talking about chemicals or bacteria or a virus or something, it's, it's continuously growing or decaying, depending on what we're talking about. In this particular example, it's growth. So this technique is really going to be very useful in, in the next section. And I wanted to be able to just show you it now post it up there. It might help you with a couple of the homework problems. Um, and then when I post um, the final chapter, the final section of 4.6's lecture, um, hopefully that'll wrap it all together and, and you'll see the, the interconnectivity of the thing, right? So how everything is connected. All right. Um, now, f of t is just an arbitrary name that I chose for a function of time. So both of these are functions of time. There are lots of different ways to represent a function. Um, the mo one of the more common ways is f of t or f of x or something like that. But of course, you've all had algebra before and you've seen various other ways of representing that. Uh, some problems call this, call this p of t. Um, if you're drawing a graph of this, it would just be y. You know, so you have your... Your f of t is like your y-axis over here. And then you have your t is like your x-axis. Yeah. So your 345 is your initial population um, or your initial investment. And it's growing exponentially. So what we're going to do is convert this base, 1.095, into base e. So we have C, E, K, T. You might recognize this formula. It's the same as P, E, R, T. The same formula, population, constant, principal, exponential, and then you have your K is the same as R. Um, it's the same formula, just dressed up in a different outfit. So you're going to set these equal to each other. You, you can just ignore the f of t notation because if this f of t is equal to this 
exponential and this f of t is equal to this exponential by substitution we can substitute and set them equal to each other you get one of the answers for free that's the c value that's a free answer c is the same as p so it's the same as principal. All right, so you get that for free. Okay, so we don't need that anymore. Now we have e to the kt is equal to 1.095 to the t power. Why are we using E? Well, because it's a nice natural base that allows us to take the ln of both sides. That's one of the nice things about E. I mean, I, I sometimes say, oh, I like it because it's only two symbols. Eh, that's one good reason to like something because it's simplicity. But the real reason why I like it is because ln and e are nice inverses of each other and they will cancel out. And it gives us a very simple way of solving for k. So we're gonna cancel the ln and the e, we're gonna bring down our t. We're gonna divide both sides by t to the bottom of my screen there, assuming that t is not zero. Assume that t is not zero, so you can divide both sides by it. And now you get a much simpler equation. You get k is equal to ln 1.095. So using my calculator, 1.095 ln, and you get 9, 0 0.0907, uh, 5, oh, and I want to do four decimals. Most of these problems have been doing four decimals, so we're going to look at our dictator as 5. We're going to round that up. The seven rounds up to an eight. So nine and a half percent annual growth is the same as 9.08% continuous growth. So a 9.5% annual produces the same value as a 9.08% continuous. So you could probably at this point round to 9.1. Um, I'm just going to leave my answer in this form. So there you go. There's your answer. You now have a base E function. F of T is 345 e to the point zero nine zero eight t and there is your natural exponential base e nature is always continuous. Yeah. The birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. They're always continuously either growing or decaying, depending on which side of the street we're looking at. Okay. So if you look at these side by side, these two functions are identical. Yeah. This is a base 1.095 and this is a base E, but they produce exactly the same values. They both have the same graph here. Same basic idea. Okay, and you can also go the other way. 
you can take a continuous growth function and you can turn it into a non-continuous growth function. You can think of it as annual or weekly or monthly or whatever. You can reverse this process. Let's start with f of t is, I don't know, um, something from the homework. I don't know. How about, um, I don't know, 500 e to the negative 0 0.06 t. Uh, before I actually, well, let's say what I want to do. Let's convert this to base A. A stands for any base. F of T is C, A, T. Remember, base A, A is equal to 1 plus R, where R is the per unit growth rate. So it could be annual, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever that R happens to represent. Um, let's go ahead and solve the problem and then I'll comment about why the exponent is negative. For now, just it is negative. It's a negative exponent. Um, when I'm done, I can do some commentary on why that exponent came out to be negative. Okay, so again, we're going to set these equal to each other. We have CAT is equal to 500 e to the negative 0 0.06t. You get one free answer, C. C is constant. It's the same as the principal or the initial value or the initial population, depending on what we're talking about. I'm doing these problems in the abstract, but I am kind of alluding to the applications that I'll be uh, wrapping this section up with. So that's free. Uh, now, once you've gotten that, you can just cross those off because they're equal to each other. If you really want to show the step, you would divide both sides by 500. But um, if C is equal to 500, we can easily just annihilate or cancel those out. Okay. So we don't really care about T. We're actually going to get rid of T. What we care about is A. We're trying to solve for A. Right, keep that in mind. T is a free variable. T is representing a, the time, and so we're not going to solve for time in this particular problem. We might solve for time in a future problem, but not in this one. Uh, so again, the whole reason why we're doing this is because the LN is a very useful tool. LN of A to the T and LN of E to the negative 0 0.06 T. Now the LN and the E will cancel. The T will come down to the front of the logarithm and become the coefficient. The ln and the e will cancel. We'll end up with negative 0 0.06. Same as last time, we're assuming that t is not 0, so we can divide both sides by t.
Hmm. Well, um, I realized that we could have solved this a lot easier just by uh, starting back up here, but we've already made it this far, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve it. We're gonna do E to both sides, and that's gonna give us the value of A. I guess you could have seen that back here, but I'd rather that you go through the whole process anyway. So what is A? A is E to the negative 0.6. You could have seen this here. So here. I just didn't notice it until we got down to here. You know, as long as you notice it at some point, it doesn't matter whether it's early or late. So. Okay, so we've got a, uh... now be careful with your calculator. Um, there are two negative signs. This negative sign means subtraction. This negative sign is how you make a number negative. So I have had several people come to me with problems that involve negatives and the, the confusion usually lies with those buttons. So make sure you use the right button to turn it into a negative. Um, and then do your E. On my calculator, it's a second function. And so that gives me my A. I'm going to approximate this to four decimals, 9418. OK. So let's talk about why the K is negative. So let's compare. So if you have continuous growth uh, versus annual growth or decay. Um, in this example, it's decay. So continuous would be f of t is 500 e to the negative 0 0.06 t versus annual. Annual would be f of t, and I should put annual in quotes. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean annual. It means whatever we are measuring time with. So if we're measuring time annually, so once a year, well, then this that's what this represents. If we're measuring time hourly, you know, using my watch, I didn't wear a watch today, um, then it would be hourly. So annual, again, is taken very loosely. Annual meaning whatever we're calling one cycle. So that would be 500, and then look at our A. Let me write that a little bit better. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the F part. These both equal F. Here, let's just put a big equal sign here. Uh, so these are equal to each other, 500. And then I've got 0 0.09418 to the T. So this is decay. If the exponent is negative, K is less than zero, and A is less than one, but greater than zero. So A is somewhere between one and zero. All right. If you look at the previous example, cross off the word growth. So these both represent decay. So suppose we're talking about growth. Uh, if it's continuous, uh, what was our example? It was um, uh, F of T was 345 
e to the 0 0.0908, if I, if I remember that correctly. That would be continuous, and that would be the same as the annual growth of 345, 1.095 to the T. So in this case, continuous growth, K is positive, and look at A. A is greater than one. So these are your clues to whether or not it is decay or whether or not it is growth. If K is less than zero, well then that means A is going to be less than one, and that means that this is decay. It means that the function is going down over time. You're starting at 500, and over a period of time, this function is going down, it's decaying, it's approaching zero. So these are both examples of decay. Over here, this is growth. So over time, if I started at 345, over a period of time, this function is going to grow exponentially. And there are two different ways of thinking about it. You can think about it continuously, which means 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the birds, the bees, the flowers, and the trees are constantly growing. Yeah. Or you can think about it like a bank. Yeah, This would be annual. Once a year, they give you your additional amount of money. Or this could also, it depends on the unit of time. So if I'm measuring my time down here with years, my x-axis is representing years, well then this would be the growth rate per year, annual growth rate. If I change my x-axis to represent some other unit of time, perhaps minutes or hours or weeks or days or something like that, well then this would change accordingly. This formula would change, its meaning would change accordingly. All right, so that's just the nitty gritty or the, the rough calculations that we're going to be doing in the final um, section. So look for that coming soon. Um, I didn't want you to wait the entire spring break, um, but I will post a video for Monday, April 13th. I'll be posting that. Uh, actually, I'll post it pretty soon, uh, but you can watch for it anytime between now and next Monday. Okay, I'm upside down. Dr. Jordan signing out. Stay healthy. Take care.